If you want to get started editing sound for picture in Pro Tools, you need to set up your Pro Tools session with some specific settings. In this video, I'll go through the basic settings you need to get started. I'm Tom Effinger from Audio Post Pro, where we help you boost your audio skills and knowledge so you can improve the quality of sound work on your film and video projects and build a skill set to succeed as an audio professional. Hey, I just want to let you guys know we're giving away a free pair of studio headphones. Check the link in the description for a chance to enter to win. Okay, let's switch over to Pro Tools and go through the settings. Okay, we've got a Pro Tools session up here. So we import the video, and right here we can see what the frame rate is of the video. So it says 23976, which is the video version of 24 frame per second. So that looks good, and you can see I've also imported the audio guide track to go with it. So that's this stereo audio track that's underneath. So what you need to do is confirm some settings in your session setup window. So we go setup, session, and we get this session setup window. The project should be set up as 48K, bit depth 24, so 48, 24. Audio format, generally we always use WAVE. AIFF and WAVE are basically the same thing, but WAVE seems to be the most common format people use. Then we like to set up our session to start two minutes before hour one, because most videos actually start at hour one. So we set up our session start to be 0, 0, 58, 0, 0, 0, 0. Right? You can click on here change all the numbers or change them individually. I believe this is the default session length limit, 24 hours. Time code rate. So this should match whatever is in the video. So here it does, 23976. Now it is possible, as you see this list, that your project could be 2997, 2997 drop, although these are older frame rates. But what you might see is 25 frame, which is PAL, which is the European standard. Or if it is a film project, it's possible that it might be what I call true 24, 24 frames per second, not 23976. But again, this would be more unusual. Almost all video projects these days are video frame rate of 24, which is 23976. So that's what we'll choose. And these are really common. You'll see 48, 24, and 23, 976 broadcast wave. Okay, so that's looking good. We don't really need to make any settings in these lower two parts of the session setup window. The default settings there are all fine. Now that I'm back in the edit window here, there are a few things we want to check here. We can go up and set this counter, the main counter in the top of the edit window, to time code. If you've been doing music, you might have had it set at bars and beats, or maybe it was set at minutes and seconds, but we want it to be set for time code so it matches picture. Once we've done that, we can go over here in this little menu in the corner here, click this drop down, and if you're set the counter, if you set the counter in timecode, this should default to timecode, but it's possible it could be set to something else. We just wanted to say timecode, and that's what it's saying here. That should bring up this timecode in your timeline display. So as you can see, now we are seeing timecode right here. And as I said, in most cases, video projects will start at one hour or they may have a countdown and start at 5950 or 5958 
with first frame of action, most often starting at one hour. So that's where I place my video. This particular video doesn't have a countdown. So we're just going to place it right at one hour. I also like having the big counter window, which I brought up by going to window big counter. So we can do that again. And that just brings up a larger counter, which is easy to see. The next thing that we like to do is go to this little window section here and set up our grid for one frame and nudge also to one frame. So what that means is I use the plus and minus keys, by the way, to zoom in and zoom out. As I zoom in, I'm seeing each frame on the grid like this. And if I blow up far enough or zoom in, now the video frames are actually lining up with each frame of my grid. What's nice being in grid to frame is we know, for example, when we get to a picture cut, that, that is exactly where the video is changing from one to another. Also, if I'm set to nudge to one frame as I am, then I can use the plus and minus keys in the numeric part of the keypad to move by frame. So I can be moving later or earlier, which is great, again, if you're dropping markers for scene cuts or you're just scrolling along on the picture to see when you need to drop a sound effect or what you might need to do. So that's super useful. So there are a couple of more settings I like to have set up. Let's go to the options menu. We want to make sure that video track is online. And also in options, I like to choose edit window scrolling set to page. That just means as my cursor advances when playing video, the screen will keep refreshing when it hits the edge of the window. Okay, those are the basic settings I like. That wraps up the settings in Pro Tools for Sound for Picture. Remember, we're giving away a free pair of studio headphones. Check the description for a link to enter to win. As always, like, comment, and subscribe.